If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for funding for your deals, regardless of what your mortgage, uh, hard money lender or your banker or any of those traditional sources would say, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you in on the funding for your deals. I've got a special guest today. In fact, if you've been tuning into the show over the past year, you know I have amazing guests that come onto the show. But before I introduce my special guest today, and we are going to be talking a lot about private money today on the show, I want to go ahead and plug all of you all into the money in just a second. But first, I want to give everybody a special welcome, especially if you're brand new to the show. This is Jay Connor. Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, and here we talk about all things real estate. We talk about single family houses. We talk about commercial. We talk about how to get funding for the deals, how to find deeply discounted deals, et cetera. And so anyway, as I promised a second ago, before we jump right into the show, I want to plug you into the funding for your deals. So I've got a free online on-demand class waiting for you to attend. It's called the five easy steps on getting the money for your deals. The subtitle is how I raised over $2 million in less than 90 days when I was cut off from the banks. So here's the uh, website right here. We're going to put it up on the screen, www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Jump right on over there uh, for the free online class after we finish the show. And I'll take you through the five steps on getting funding for your deals, regardless of your experience, your credit, or your verification of income. Well, today, as I just mentioned and alluded to a second ago, I've got a very, very special guest, a very, very good friend, a colleague, a fellow mastermind member that is just knocking it out of the park. He's not the guy that's a talking head. He and his wife are actually doing the business. And so let me tell you just a little bit about my special guest, and then I'll tell you who he is. So my special guest today right now has got over 1,000 apartment units, over 1,000 doors, and he just started not long ago on getting into commercial, and he's just busting it wide open. He is a best-selling author, the name of his book is why the rich get richer the secret to cash flowing apartments you may have seen him at harvard he's been also uh seen at nasdaq speaking there and he and his wife reside in phoenix arizona we're in a high-end mastermind together and i tell you what in fact when i talk about a servant's heart this guy has got it down he's all about serving other people and when i went to this high-end mastermind for the first time just a couple of years ago this guy was mining Carol Joy's ambassador. He took us all around and got us introduced to all the movers and shakers there at the group. And I'm just so excited to have my good friend here on the show with me, Corey Peterson. Corey, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. Man, that's an introduction, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you so much. It was last year sometime or not too long ago. You had me on your podcast as well. And man, your your podcast is like uh, like uh, knocking it out of the park as well, right? Yeah, man. It's, you know, everybody's looking for information and, and good people that, they, that actually know how to bring it. And uh, I, just much like you. And if you come from the heart, uh, that seems to make the kind of podcast grow. Absolutely. So we're going to be talking today about, uh, you know, uh, commercial apartments how you can get into it without using your own money. We're going to be talking about private money. Of course, my audience knows that, you know, we talk a lot about private money here on the show. But I tell you, when I connected with you, uh, Corey, I mean, man, uh, you taught me some stuff about this world of private money. But before we jump into that, tell folks, uh, take a moment and tell folks your background and, and what it was that led you to get into real estate investing. Sure. You know, I started like everybody else, uh, probably in real estate that had a dream and a hope because I was a used car salesman turned, I guess, restaurant manager. I, I was a real catch. And, um, you know, something actually magical happened. It was almost 18 years ago. My mom was married to this man and uh, his name was Bruce. And I call him Bruce Wayne. OK, <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't Batman, but he was absolutely loaded. 
and he had a house in Hawaii. And I, uh, me and Shelly, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife of 17 years, got invited to go to Hawaii. And lo and behold, Bruce has a house right on the beach. And nice. I remember waking up early in the morning. We walked, walked that beach, watched the sun come up. And it was, it was just, it was inspirational. But what happened is I looked back over at Bruce's house from across the cove. And I was like, what does this guy do? Because he had time and money. I mean, and you could tell no one had his finger on him. And so I finally asked him and guess what he said he did. He said he did real estate and that he uh, owned apartment complexes. And so I left the island thinking he was the big kahuna. Right. And, uh, now, I wish it got better because Bruce was a prick. He was never going to teach me. But um, I read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in 2004. And that book, all I could do when I was reading it, I thought about Bruce. Or Bruce and I, I connected the dots. And so in 2005, I started my own company called Kahuna Investments. Because <laughs> I wanted to be a big kahuna just like Bruce was. <laughs> I love it. And I really started off as a wholesaler because when I looked at myself, I'm like, what, what do I have? I didn't have any money. I barely had any credit. And, you know, but I had a lot of want to. And so I started off as a wholesaler. I'd go out and find guys that had uh, money and I'd go find them deals. And, you know, kind of what happened was, you know, so I was doing that. I started getting in the game of real estate. You know, I wouldn't make a lot. I was making three or $4,000 per wholesaling transaction. Not like people do now, but back in 2009 and 10, that's kind of how it was. You know, you're doing finding deals on the MLS and, you know, short sales, things like that. But then something really major happened that changed my life. And that was, and, and Jay, as I'm going out and talking on these bigger stages and platforms, I've come to realize now that this one thing that I'm getting ready to share is what separates me being a multi multi-millionaire versus the average investor that's hustling, grinding each and every day and every month, right? And that is private money. Yes. I raised my first piece of private money, Jay, and I did it by accident. Yeah, I want to hear the story, and so does the audience. Yeah, so here I was wholesaling, making $3,000 rips, but I was managing these guys as wholesales for them where they were making $25,000, right? And I was like, gosh, i got to figure out a way to, to flip the script so I can make that money. Right. And so I'm playing racquetball with this guy. His name's Carl. Now, my former background, I used to be a financial advisor, right? So I, I did graduate and got, I became a finan and I learned everything about money. And this was one of my old clients, but he had no additional money. It was all tied up. So I was asking him for his help. And so we're playing racquetball after racquetball. He'd watch me kind of build a little track record wholesaling. And I just actually played racquetball with him today. He's 69 years old. Nice. Yep. And so, and he beat me one game. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I go to him. And so the thing about Carl, Carl lived in a retirement community. And I was like, man, Carl may not have any money, but surely he knows somebody that does. And so I was asking him as his friend, I'm like, hey, Carl, listen, you see what I'm doing? I'm wholesaling these deals and I'm making a $3,000 fee. My investors are making $25,000 rips. I want to flip the script. I could probably pay 12% and give like a note and deed of trust. And I was like, Carl, do you know anybody in that community? And so he's like, well, I'll see what I can do. Well, guess what? The next day, Carl calls me and he's like, hey, Corey. Uh, do you still want to do that 12%? And in the back of my mind, I was like, man, Carl found somebody. And he goes, Corey, hey, you don't know this, but my home's totally paid for. I can borrow money at 3%. You give it to me at 12. I can make a spread. How much money do you need? Now, that was a big question. So I, I drew up everything that I was, and I was like, okay, this is the moment, right? And I was like, Carl, I need $85,000. And he was like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, where do you want me to send it? And just like that, man, my jaw hit the ground. I didn't know how to answer it. So I was like, uh, uh, uh. But I raised my first piece of private money. And I'm going to tell you, Jay, I equated to like going into the telephone booth as Clark Kent. Yeah. Spun around that thing and I come out saying, I raised private money. Right. <laughs> 
I think that was underdog, Corey. I think that was underdog. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know, you and I've got something else in common. We got a lot in common. But you know, the very first private lender that I talked to, my approach was the same thing. I didn't ask this person for money. In fact, you and I have taught said this in the past. I've never asked anybody for money. I've never asked anybody for money. I've told, I've asked them to spread the word. And I've told people about my program, but I remember going to my first, well, I didn't know it was a potential private lender. The first person I told my program to, I told them that, uh, in fact, it was on a Bible study at church on a Wednesday night. I went up to him before church started and I said, hey, I got something confidential to talk to you about after we finish. Have you got a few minutes? Well, by the time we finished, he was biting at the bit a hour later, wanting to find out what all this confidential stuff was I wanted to talk about anyway. So when we got together, I just told him, I said, you know, you've been an entrepreneur all your life. You know, a lot of people, you're plugged into every civic group in the community. You're big time into the Rotary Club. And I told him, I said, I've now opened up my real estate investing business by referral only. And when you run across somebody that's not happy with their returns, either in their CDs, or their stocks or whatever, would you refer them to me? And you know what, Corey? Immediately he said, well, what kind of returns have you got in mind? <laughs> Man, that is, so I always say that's my two rules. You never ask people for money. No. You only ask them who do they know. And, right. And the right people will always self-select. That's right. right? And, that's you know, right. So you fast forward this, like, so we'll get into the multifamily thing and how I transitioned. But like last year, we did $25 million in purchases in apartment complexes. And I raised $10 million doing nice. that same concept. It's never nice. changed. Love it. Love it. Now, I want to make a note because I want to I want to come back to the, uh, the that $10 million that you did last year. And really what I want us to talk about in a moment is the structure of a, an apartment complex private money funded deal, say versus a more simpler single family, you know, deal. Yeah. But before we get into that, I'm making a note right here for us to talk about structuring a little bit. First, let's go back to single family houses. You know, you did wholesaling for years and then you got into commercial. And yes, I know you just told everybody about, you know, Bruce and he was big time into apartments. Did it take you a while before you really started focusing on the commercial? And did you do single family for a while? Or Yeah, I did. I did single. Fa so 2009, even though I started my company in 2005, I mean, I did a couple of little things, but I really went full time in 2009. Okay. And I was, I started off wholesaling, but once I learned private money, I was doing fix and flip. And, and here in Phoenix, Arizona, lots. And when the market crashed, it was like throw a dart and find a deal. Right. So I'm doing at this point, I started doing seven to eight. I mean, I got where because I, I learned once you but when I open my eyes to private money, if you had a private money program, which I soon created. Right. Because I was like, man, who else is raising private money and how are they doing it? Right. You got to have a program. You know, this is how I do it. Right. right. And, then you ask, and then you ask people to just look at your program. Right. right. And poke some holes in it. Right. Because yeah. I think, you know, if you don't understand it, no one else is. That's right. And, and so that's kind of how, and then I had a credibility kit that all I did was say before and after photos. Here's before, here's after, and here's what I sold it for. Here's what I bought it for. Here's what I sold it for. I bought, you know, like four or five pages of that, right? And in the beginning, I was a wholesaler. I didn't use my deals. I used their deals because right. I, I, I was the one who found them. I just didn't have the money to fund them, right. right? So, but I still did all the work. So that's how I, I did it. But 2011, some 2010, something started to happen to change. It was getting harder for me to find single family fix and flip deals because I was only using the MLS doing bank owned and REO, you know, uh, short sales. Well, once that started to dry up, I started to get because, man, I now have about $3 million of money what, counting on Corey, right? And they want me to, I mean, they're like, hey, Corey, you know, make sure you keep my money working. And I was now in a dilemma. And honestly, Jade, this part of my life is where I started to not live my life that I envisioned of sunsets and palm trees. I ended up being a workaholic where 
My son looks at me on Friday, says, Dad, are you going to be at my game? And I'm like, sure, you no problem, son, I'll be there. But, you know, that's Saturday, Saturday around 3. But I was, I was like, man, I got three properties you got to look at that morning. So I woke up early. And long story short, man, is I missed my son's game. And he came off the field and saw me come at the very end. And he, and he came up and he started crying. And he's like, Dad, you promised. And, I mean, uh, you know, picture – a nine-year-old kid, eight-year-old kid, <laughs> you know, and just and right in your in your shoulder, you know, and I got him in my chest, and I felt like an, a horrible father. And I'm telling you, it broke me. It broke me something bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, kids are so forgiven, but inside, I'm like, why would I go and chase money at the expense of my family? That's not what I got into real estate for. That's right. So, and in that broken state, something magical again. God's always had His hand on me. I'm telling you. Yep. Because I dropped my son off and because this is a this is a I'm in, I'm downplaying it, but this was a big event in my life where Corey was at a crossroads and I'm driving and I'm crying, feeling like a, a, a failing father. And I'm asking God to forgive me, right? For being to putting the wrong things first. And right. I finally come to a point where I actually forgive myself. And mm-hmm. I'm and I'm just driving around, I'm, I finally got a little calm to it. And I drove by this apartment complex. And Jay, I'm telling you, I've driven by this apartment complex a million times. Right. But that day at that moment in my broken state of mind, in my humble state of mind, something happened that changed everything. Because I, I, I drove by it and I said, I used to say, I wish I could own an apartment complex. I wish. Right. That day I said, how can I own an apartment complex? Well, the power of questions. And once I did that, my brain started working. And then I thought of my flashback back to Bruce living time and money. And, and I was like, that's it. That is the absolute way. I knew it. I knew it for a fact. And I drove, I, you know, did a U-turn. I went to Barnes and Nobles. I bought some books on, on multifamily. I started, and within a year, I felt proficient at it. And in 2011, I bought my first apartment complex. Wow. I bought, I bought it for $3.2 million. I raised $1.4 million of private money. None of my money in the deal. And by the way, I just sold that property two years ago for 8.8 million bucks. Nice. <laughs> and so, uh, so I got into apartments because of a broken state of mind. But now that I've realized it, for me, it's about cash flow and creating what I call legacy wealth, right? And, and, and a cash flow life, like living life intentionally to where you have time to do the things you want to do for the things that are important. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me just go ahead and jump ahead with a question that just came to mind. You know, well, well let's go ahead and talk about it this way. Let's talk for a, for a few minutes about, and then we'll get into structuring the deal and finding the money, you know, for the deals. Yep. But, you know, you've done single family and you've done a lot of commercial. So in your, in your experience, Corey, what would you say are the benefits and advantages of commercial and apartments versus what you were doing with single family? Um, scaling for one, scaling, right? So it's hard to buy a hundred houses in any geography. I mean, location wise, right? And they're going to be spread out everywhere, but it's very simple and very easy to do with an apartment complex. And I'll pay less for them that way, right? So I've got one lawn to, to mow. I've got one property and I and usually the way these things are built and structured and sold is that they already come with expenses that they the seller believes you're going to have which is a property manager staff salaries to have full-time people at the property and when you do that and you, you partner together now you can you don't have the uh, mess I think that a lot of people have with single family homes right and then the last thing is taxes right so when you flip properties, sell properties, buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, listen, you're a trader, okay, with, an, with a D, E-R, right? But you, you do it long enough, you feel like a trader because we all felt, we all read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, we, and cash flow is what Robert talked about. And so true investors get depreciation, right? Because you keep things longer than just a quick turn, right? Now, with new laws right now, there's a called a, you can do a, what's called a cost segregation study. And I bought three deals last year. We bought a $10 million deal last year that we got a $3 million year one tax write-off. 
that nice. and, because, and because I'm a real estate professional, I can take that towards all other earned income. Now that's a game changer, my friend. Yeah. Your biggest partner is Uncle Sam, whether you know it or not. And if you can get them out of your back pocket, boy, that's that's something neat. You would say scaling, scaling. And of course, it's much quicker to build that ongoing wealth in the in the single family house business uh, versus, you know, the apartment. So let's talk for a moment about well, okay, let's talk for another minute or two about the private money and then let's jump into the structuring, the structuring of a deal yep. using using the funding. So on private money, how do you how do you find the money? How do you find the money? And same private to it already. Yeah, same way you probably do. I mean, I go I, I do individual people. My my target market or I call them avatar is anybody that has an IRA, right? Yep. Because they're not getting any returns in it. They don't trust the stock market. Average people. So how do I find these people? Personally, I love going to Rotary. Go to go to a charity. Be and not just go to it. Be involved in the charity. Like find something you really love to do, and then be a servant there. And you'll start finding all the people that you'll need that will know other people, right? And that's one. That's my biggest thing. I, like I'm a Rotarian. I raised money with a guy one day. He just showed up, and we started talking and. Hey, what do you do? And what do you do? Next thing you know, next week we had a meeting and he gave me, you know, half a million bucks. Right. And, and he's like, because you're Rotarian, because I already, I already know, right? Like you're the kind of guy I want to do business with. But I'd say it's a lot of that. It's just meeting everyday ordinary people that have money that they just want a, a different alternative than the stock market. Absolutely. Absolutely. So on the structuring of these deals. So let me take just a moment and and lay out to all of our uh, audience here, just as a reminder, the easy structuring of a single family house when we're yes. going to do that deal. Then I want to turn it back over to you, Corey, and you in layman's terms, because yep. the majority yep. of my audience here has never done a, a commercial deal yet. They yeah, and done- I, barely, I barely met out of high school, Jay, so this is no problem. I, I only speak fifth grade. There you go. There you go. So just to remind everybody, here's the easy structure of funding your deal with private money when it's a single family house. So the way the way I do it and the way I explain it to my students is every deal stands on its own and you've got a private lender and you can have more than one private lender that is loaning money that is secured by the same collateral on a single family house. So just a, a simple example on a single family house deal. So if I've got a, um, a single family house, that has got an after repaired value, as let's say of $200,000. Typically, I don't want to borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value of a single family house. So in that case, I wouldn't borrow, borrow more than 150,000, but I can buy a lot of those homes at like $100,000 I get a $50,000 check when I buy because I bought it for a hundred. I borrowed 150. I'm going to use 30 or 35,000 of that excess cash when I bought it because I always borrow more than I need to buy the house. I'll use 30 or 35 for the rehab. And then the leftover 15,000 could be for marketing costs, carrying costs, anything else, you know, associated with the deal. And so Typically, I've got either one or maybe two individual people funding a single family house deal. They get the, as you just mentioned, they get the mortgage. In some states, it's called a deed of trust. So one of them's going to be in first position. If there's another one, they're going to be in second position. And each of them are getting their own mortgage. Each of them are getting their own promissory note. And when that house sells, then they get all of their principal back because we make interest only payments or accrue interest. And then we go do another deal. So it's about, that's about as simple as it gets on a single family house with a one or maybe two private lenders that are funding that particular single family house. So give us the fifth grade explanation of what's the structure look like on using individual private money to fund the apartment complex. Yep, very. it's very simple. 
So except that you have to hire someone like an attorney, an SEC attorney. This is usually about $12,000 cost, 12 to 15. But it's okay because you're going to get, you're going to borrow more than you're going to need. So just like when we structure a deal, we structure with all these costs, we're going to raise all the money we need to pay for them. But I might have to upfront them first, okay? Or, or I'll just find an investor to upfront them for me, right? So it doesn't matter. But we typically have what's called A shares and B shares, okay? A shares are where all our investors go. And typically, so your operating docs are just going to say, hey, here's A shares, limited partnerships. All, you know, they're going to give you money. They don't have any voting rights, but they're also, but they are owners of the deal. Okay. And then the B shares is Corey's sponsorship group, the general partner. And I might have me and a couple other people, someone like Jay or somebody else, we'll have a, a couple LLCs together in one, you know, big LLC, you know, uh, tying us all together. Right. And then, so that's, that's the guys and we're, our job is to go out and raise money. Now the money on the A shares, it's just simply you raise, just like you're saying, you go and talk to all these people you can pool money together as much as you need. Couple rules. You only have, we do what was called a 506B offering. That's kind of a, we, there's an exemption because when you pull private capital together, there's some rules and we're regulated by the SEC. Easy way to say it, but I'm not gonna get complicated. All we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to people that we know and we're gonna come into our deal. They're gonna be A share investors. And then we just define the terms of what they get. Now, they don't get a note of deed of trust. So they're equity investors. So that means 100% of their money is at risk. Okay. They understand that. But we say, we look at these apartments are like factories, right? They take in the forms of rent checks each and every month. And we don't ever buy empty factories. We buy factories that have at least 85% most of the times of people in there paying the rents, right? And then we, you know, we do all the expenses and stuff and we spit out profit. That's our deliverables, right? And that's what our investors get. And we typically will pay a 6% pref, right? Meaning they get first dips out of all the profit in the deal. And we usually give them quarterly payments. So now they get quarterly payments every quarter. We give nice reporting every month. And then typically our deals are five year whole. Now that's a lot longer than a, quick fix or upper, right? But most of our investors are usually IRA investors or long-term focus where they really want a paycheck, right? So we give them a 6% paycheck. And then the, the bonus is when we sell the property, like, and there's one thing that we do, like our tenants expect rents to go up and we never disappoint them. <laughs> right? And so, <laughs> As we raise rents, we also increase the value of our property, and we hold our, year, our properties for five years for a reason. It takes a year to fix all the broken stuff, right? A year to fix all the broken tenants. We want to upgrade our tenant base, higher credit scoring tenants, and then we three years to maximize operations, right? To raise the rents as high as we can and keep our expenses as low as we can. When we do that correctly, at the end of that fifth year, we can sell for a, a pretty good profit, and then we give our investors an additional. 6% annualized in their return. So they're going to make 12%. So it's not complicated. It's just a longer hold. And, and what we've always done, because I started off with single family, Jay, and how I transitioned my capital, and this is important, transitioning capital, is I would start telling people, here's where we're going. And for like right now, the market's super hard. It's hard to find deals. Or at least it is in Phoenix, hard to find deals. And so, and the cost of deals keep going up. So we could use that event as a, hey, listen, here's the reason why. So we're going to go into more of a cash flow product, right? We, we look at apartments as really we base it on cash flow first. And that seems to be what most people are interested in because they know they're going to get a, a paycheck. So that's, we, we sell our deals on the income stream with a carrot on the end. I got you. So you, in your operation, Corey, do you look for these deals uh, these apartment deals yourself or do you have an acquisitionist or do you have other people on your team that are out there looking and that's part a of the question who's doing the looking part two is somebody that's brand new that wants to go looking for deals where do they look 
Yep. Okay. Perfect. In the beginning, yes, I did all the work myself. I'm not to that point anymore. Now Corey's lazy, right? So Corey has people that do it for him, right? And we have an acquisition team and their job. Uh, last year, we underwrote 732 deals. Okay. Full, I call it a Wall Street grade financial, you know, underwriting. Really, we teach people how to do this, right? So like how to analyze a deal, right? What makes a deal? And a lot of times we just call it kissing frogs. We kiss a lot, a lot of frogs. And we just hope last year, six of them turned into princesses, <laughs> right? Six of them. Wait a minute. What's the definition of kissing? And how many did you have to kiss to get six? 732. Right. So now what's, what's the definition of kissing? Does that mean like doing research on them? Underwriting. In our business, we call it underwriting. In other words, you take someone, a broker lists a deal. He says, here's our deal. Here's all the financials. Here's the numbers. And so you take that information, you put it into a calculator, right? And it kind of does, right? Put all the stuff in there. And then based on our operations numbers, like we know how we are. I'll, I'll, and I teach people how this, how it works is what kind of numbers should you have in operations, right? We give you those numbers because these are the safe numbers. Right. And, and then it spits out, we make some assumptions of what we think we'll do in future years and it'll spit out whether it's a qualified deal or not. Gotcha. And so it's a, you know, so it's just a little bit of a process. It's not hard, but it, it's called extracting the information and then putting in something, and then you have to go do a little follow-up to see if that's true and accurate. Because, listen, we all know that sellers lie. Right. 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 Now, Whether it's single-family house or otherwise. Yeah, right. doesn't matter. They're right. always – and when they're talking, it's probably not the truth, right? <laughs> but we got we to gotta figure out what the truth is. But how we find these deals, this is actually the easiest part, different from single-family. Single-family usually going direct to seller – anymore you know doing marketing uh, mailers and stuff like that in the commercial world you're usually dealing with a much more sophisticated seller right someone like me so we're, we typically use brokers right the commercial brokers and now in that it's really about relationships i say like you can use this uh, loopnet.com go to loopnet.com and you can pick a city and say you want to look at apartments you'll find all the uh, guys that have listings and then you just subscribe to their email list and you're going to start getting deals. And so that's like to get deal flow is, not, is very simple in the apartment business, but it's underwriting. That's where it's, that's where most people don't want to do the work, right? So we teach to go get a VA, do most of the work for you, teach them the process. I got you. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here, uh, Corey. So uh, I've heard you talk in the past that you've got this like magical software or a decision maker that people can just sort of fill in the blanks and it comes back and, and sort of analyzes the deal. So have you got like something you can give my audience that they could like use to analyze deals? Man, I'd love to do that, brother. So let's, let's do this. So if, uh, if, if you guys want to, it's called the Kahuna cash flow calculator, right? And it's going, it's, and it's a whole membership site. It's got case studies. It has a whole thing to help teach you how to do it. Right. Like, we hold your hand all the way through and it's simple videos, simple. Cause like Corey's, I barely made it out of high school, Jay. It's gotta be simple. Right. It's gotta be straightforward. Right. So to get that, if they will text CALC, C-A-L-C to 480-500-1127, right? That's CALC, C-A-L-C to 480-500-1127. I will give it to them for free. It's, we normally sell for uh, 600 bucks. Oh, my lands. That's awesome, Corey. Thank you so much. So quite a bit of my audience that actually watches on uh, YouTube. And of course, we're also audio on iTunes and Google Play and other places. But for the, so everybody in the show notes, I'll make sure we put in the show notes, those instructions on how to get the uh, software that Corey typically sells for 600 bucks, but he's giving it to all of you all for free. And for those of y'all that are watching, perhaps on YouTube or any video, I'm going to ask my director of the show to put it right up here on the video. So let's do it one more time, Corey. Give out, watch the, so text, yep. C-A-L-C. Yep, to 480-500-1127. All right, perfect. Man, I appreciate that. 
Well, we're starting to run out of time, Corey, but I got a couple more questions for you before we jump and run. Again, thank you so much for giving that to uh, my audience. So you've been doing this quite a while and what's one, what's your biggest lesson learned? I mean, I'm sure you've been by now to a seminar that you didn't plan on going to. Yeah. You know, my biggest thing. So looking back, I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately too. Just saying, man, I made great money, great money doing single family fix and flip and wholesaling. But I honestly become a multimillionaire and started getting real net worth when I transitioned to multi. I wish I would have done it a little sooner. I wish I would at least put my foot in the door, right? You know, and started thinking. And even if it's single family, even if your thing's just single family, I'm telling you right now, buy some stuff to hold and keep for your your day, right? Your cash flow, your moat. Like there's there's something so awesome this year. You know, I told you when I made that, I, I didn't tell you this part, but when I sold that property, I made 4.8 million bucks, right? I did a 1031 exchange into another deal. So that means I didn't have paying taxes, right? I bought a $12.7 million deal. That one will pay me half a million dollars in cash flow for the rest of my life. Nice. And cash flow is what sets you free, right? Yep. When you have money showing up with, for work you've not done, I'm telling you, that's the most sexiest thing out there is <laughs> cash flow, right? And I'm serious about that. And I'm telling you, everybody should be getting more of it, right? It, whether it's single family or multi, doesn't matter. Start planning for your success to keep some of that choice stuff. Man, make it yours. Man, I love it. Corey, I love your heart. As I mentioned in the introduction, I know from firsthand, you are a servant. You got a servant's heart. Of course, uh, you've gotten to be around my Carol Joy. I've gotten to be around your Shelly, and you all are just fantastic people. Look forward to seeing you soon again at the upcoming uh, Mastermind that we're in together. And thank you so much for giving people, you know, an overview of what your experience in commercial and uh, apartments has been. And again, a big thank you for uh, offering the software to all of our uh, viewers and listeners. Parting comments, Corey, what are your parting comments? Man, uh, real estate, if you're out there and you're new, I'm telling you right now, you're in the right place. Jay's teaching you something that is ab absolutely, it's the one thing that changed my life. Being able to command capital where you, you and where you say, I mean, this is, these are phone calls. We say, hey, John, I need $100,000. Can you send it here? And they take action and do it. It is the most amazing thing ever. And if you believe it, you can achieve it, right? Because you... You have to start with a belief that you want something better. I'm telling you, Jay, Jay teaches it, by the way. And that's, that's, that's the difference, man. And, and stick with good information. And, you know, you're getting it right here. That's awesome. Corey Peterson, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our audience here uh, tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.